So we are here today with one of my OG brow bays, I would say. <laughs> Uh, we originally did her brows back in, was it 2019? Yeah, right before the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Which is just never ending, <laughs> by the way. It's still going on. <laughs> I cannot believe this is still going on because they told us two weeks. No, it's and that's been, been years. It's a tad bit longer. Years ago. <laughs> so today we are going to be talking about dating. Okay. And I more recently have had to change my verbiage, just how I describe dating, how I thought about it, because I had to change how I was experiencing it. Mm. And it's only been a brief moment in time for me, but instantly I just feel such a change Mm -hmm. after creating and maintaining standards and Mm. boundaries in my life. So I wanted to bring you on. Of course, I don't know your full story, but just based on the small chats we've had, I feel like you have a lot of experience with this same thing I'm talking about. Most likely, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't even know how long ago. I'll say December at least is when I finally just decided, you know, I'm getting tired of this. Mm-hmm. And I'm experiencing things, but it seems to be almost the same thing, same experiences, just different people's bodies. Like I'm meeting okay. this person who does this and now wait, I left this person alone, but now I've met this person who's really doing the same thing. And, you know, I used to be in certain situations for years yeah. and wasn't happy. And so I think that was my first step realizing when something wasn't for me mm-hmm. and letting it go. Mm-hmm. But to the outside, unsuspecting eye, it seems like, you know, she's strange. Why is she alone? You're you're getting older. You don't want to get married. Don't you want to have this and that and all these great guys out here? But I had to really work on the relationship that I had with myself mm-hmm. first. Right. Because that was the real reason why I was tolerating so many things. It wasn't even... So much that the people were just bad and terrible people, I was accepting bad and terrible treatment Yeah, Mm -hmm. because I didn't have a good relationship with myself. So that was my first thing. I started to ask myself, if nothing changes, Mm -hmm. if everything stays exactly the way it is right now, would you want to continue on like this for years to come? And the answer has been no. So we'll start with that. What was the turning point for you personally? And then I started to to see that I was dating myself better than the guys I was dating, right? And so if I can treat me better, then why am I? Really, like you said, every situation, she um, chews the meat and spits out the bone. There you go. That's her thing. And I like I it. Really, I'm really not a fan of that because... Does that be so graphic? But <laughs> choose the meat and spit spit out the bone. She even said something recently about reaching into the toilet after you use the restroom. Mm-hmm. Would you pick up your poop and right. examine it in and want to fill it all in your hands? No, this is a waste product. Mm-hmm. It went in here because you need to remove of it the food or whatever you ate. Did what it was supposed to do in your body. You got the mm-hmm. lesson, right? But now you just let go of That's it. The You're not going to harp over what happened. And constantly think about it. Oh, my God. I had a lady come in uh, towards the end. She wasn't my client, but I had another girl working with me, and we were running a show. So she came in for that. And when I tell you, she told us her life story, Mm -hmm. her life story, which I'm not discrediting discrediting what she said because she said that her husband drained their bank account. She had millions of dollars. He took it all and, like, married his secretary that he had been having an affair with. So I can see why you're upset. Right. Please know they're not having this conversation, and especially with you came in here to get your brows done. Exactly. And you're going to unload all this on here. I had to really step out because she was so mad and just unpacking and unpacking and unpacking. And I just feel like I can't even breathe in here. Like, it's a bit much. Mm-hmm. She also had a friend that came who started tag teaming with the stories. And I'm like, this is not, y'all are two peas in a, yeah miserable ass pie Mm -hmm. but they just go went back over years and years and how they were wronged in the world's smallest violin to strangers so so you're saying this to anybody who will listen right if you're constantly rehashing this negative experience speaking that over yourself again Mm -hmm. 
you're going to continue to receive more right. of that. Absolutely. And why would you want more of that? Right. So, you know, I didn't know her. And I didn't feel comfortable saying this to her because I didn't know her well right. enough. But mm-hmm. she felt comfortable enough spelling it all out like they screwed on the desk in his office. Why well, do I need to know that? Where are they now, though? You think yeah. they're having a meeting talking about you? Right. Absolutely, Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And, you know, when we talk about setting expectations and setting boundaries, and, of course, if something like that were to happen, you would feel the pain of it, and yeah. you have a right to feel your feelings, but you also need to set boundaries for when it's no long, that's no longer okay for me to wallow in the sadness yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, what can I learn from this situation, and how can I move on? You know, that could have been a story of empowerment and how I was able to pick up the pieces yeah. and now look at Triumph. me getting my brows done. That could have been the story. You know, let's let's change the perspective. Yeah. You yeah. have the ability to change the narrative on anything that's happened to you. Absolutely. Anything. But it's up to you to do that. Mm-hmm. I can't come along and be like, you know, you told me your story, but actually what happened was you overcame. Mm-hmm. You faced adversity. You You beat the odds. And yeah. even if I'm saying that to you, but you're still in and a victim that, mindset, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what I say. You're ready to unload this, like, really, to anyone. Because we don't even know each other, man. Yeah. You don't know me at all. We just met. We just met. <laughs> and you've given me your life story. Mm-hmm. But your life story of pain and problems and the bad things that have happened to you. So now... You can barely even get up, and you're having trouble moving around. And I'm not just going to automatically say the two things are together, uh, but there's a correlation. If you're speaking yeah. this negatively about your dating experience, I'm sure you're speaking the same way over your body. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, my knees, they do this when it rains, and I just always, uh, this runs in my family. And I just have always been someone to speak life. Mm-hmm. Over myself, mm-hmm. you know, speak what you see until it appears in your reality. Speak into the atmosphere, like all these things they're saying. I hear y'all saying them. I see the status, right? But then when it's time to do this, it's easier to be a victim. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You get pat on the back, and oh my, he did what? Exactly, right? Misery loves company. We all have heard that saying before. I'm just not for that <laughs> because what does that really even? do like so what you told me a sad story pat you on the back when i leave here today you think i'm thinking about this again Mm -hmm. the only reason why it stuck with me because it was so bad that i had to leave the building wow and we had a 2500 square foot building so this is a lot of space Mm -hmm. but she had just filled it up yeah with mystery yeah yeah. This is a happy place. I'm playing music. It's pink. It's sparkly in here. Right. Why would you bring <laughs> this here? Right. But I have to remind myself that I'm seeing people for a small amount of time. Mm-hmm. In the grand scheme of things, it's a very small portion of their life. But if this is how you are in a small brow appointment, mm-hmm. I want to see you outside of this. I don't I'd rather not. Right. And I really feel sorry for them. Um, not just her, but even people who are rude and negative towards Absolutely. me, I no longer take anything personally. Mm-hmm. Nothing. I mean, even if they say Carmen, I, they're still not really speaking to me. They're speaking to the insecurity that they have inside. They don't know how to address it, so they're projecting it onto me. So mm-hmm. I take and I hold on to nothing. Yeah. Because if you could be this upset over such a small thing like this to someone you don't know. Right. How is your conversation to yourself every day? Right. I don't even, I really don't even want to know. Wouldn't want to trade places with you. Mm-hmm. I'll say a little prayer. <laughs> and then that's it. But other people aren't really able to do that sometimes. Yeah. But if you already feel victimized, mm-hmm. now this person has wronged you on top of all you've already dealt with. Mm-hmm. This is just adding fuel to your fire. And honestly, I feel that's really heaven and hell for people. You know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I was that actually your just kind of took the experience. words out of my mouth. It's re-victimization, and you're doing it to yourself. To yourself. Yeah. Because the person who did whatever to you, they are. It, you probably have not crossed their mind at all. No, absolutely not. You weren't on their person. mind when they were. <laughs> I say on people the desk are with the secretary. Um, <laughs> bulldozing their way through life. Yeah. You're bulldozing your way through life. You don't care about 
anything. Yeah. And whenever I did start to feel, you know, wronged or, yes, they did this or that, I have to say to myself, they are up and on to the next thing. Absolutely. They're they not are. thinking about how this could have been differently. What could I have done differently so I didn't hurt her that badly? You know, I should have been. No, they're not. No, they're not thinking about that at all. It's kind of like when you, you bruise. You bruise your arm mm. and you poke it mm. so you can feel the pain mm. and then kind of mm. get a little sense of pleasure from it. But each time you poke it, it takes it that much longer to, to heal. heal. So you have to learn how to walk away from that and allow it to heal. Yeah. But if you wallow in it, it won't go anywhere. No, it won't. Um, I have experienced a lot of things. Now that I'm talking about my story and sharing mm-hmm. things with people, only once you say it out loud do you realize, like, this is, was really a messed up situation. Mm-hmm. Like, I was mistreated. Mm-hmm. But at the time, I just took my lesson from it. You know, mm-hmm. I worked somewhere, they were taking 40% of my earnings, and I didn't realize it, but we're chitty chatting, we're friends mm-hmm. every day hanging out. And then when I realized this was what was happening, it, I'm not going to lie, it knocked the wind out of me. Yeah. Because it was tens of thousands of dollars. But I instantly was like, Carmen, why, the, why, why were you even letting someone else be over your money? Though? Yeah. You've been in mm-hmm. business long enough, you know how to pay yourself. Yeah. So, lesson. Right. Don't right. Let, no matter what they say, you need to have your own CPA. You need to have your own, you know, whatever, because then you'll be in situations like this. Yeah. So I took the mm-hmm. lesson, and I realized I can afford to work on my own. Right. And then I left. Mm-hmm. But someone else could have been oh. mm-hmm. and just every day driving by, looking mm-hmm. slow and mm-hmm. mad. And I don't, I don't have that space for negativity in my life. So it happened. I learned from it. Mm-hmm. But now if you say, hey, I'm thinking about going into this with my friend, she's saying, whoa, 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 whoa. She said, what? Actually, mm-hmm. here's a CPA. You need to have your own no matter what. Yeah, y'all yeah. are cool. Y'all are best friends. Y'all besties? Okay, that's cool. Mm-hmm. But Erica, hey, I went through this. Mm-hmm. And just based off my experience, I would suggest that you have your own CPA. Right. And then that's it. Yeah. But when we help ourselves and we learn things about ourselves, then we're able to help other people yeah so here we are today doing yes. that very thing. absolutely and you know it <laughs> looks easy now we're sitting up here we're cute <laughs> we're talking but at the time they weren't there with us you know shooting with us in the gym so right. they don't know <laughs> the pain we endure to become this wise absolutely wisdom it's, it's a earned. painful process <laughs> yeah it's it's uh you go through things to learn lessons and we learn the most by making mistakes and mm-hmm. so I still will be making mistakes mm-hmm. because I'm still learning. Yeah. But I can't even beat myself up about them. I just know, okay, next time, X, Y, Z. Right. Right. And you also recognize that you have to allow that same grace for whoever you're partnered with. Yeah. Because they won't come into the relationship have being perfect or mm-hmm. having learned every lesson that they're meant to learn. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we do get to pick and choose which of those fault we were willing to accept yeah yeah but also knowing that that's a part of it too and and hopefully you're a partner with someone that is willing to grow and learn with you instead of apart from you yes man just (laughs) that right there if we just applied that one sentence to all the relationships in the world do you know how many would dissolve right Mm -hmm. a lot of them Mm -hmm. But who's saying these type of things to us? Right. You know, when you're a girl, you're getting older, you mm-hmm. want to start dating. Don't have no babies. Mm-hmm. Make sure you get a man with a job. Mm-hmm. You need to be earning good money. And is there, did you were you told anything else? Um, oh, don't let it. nobody hit you. Oh, and don't yeah, don't let anybody don't hit let you. anybody hit you. But at the same time, don't let anybody hit you physically. But they don't tell you about not letting someone hit you emotionally, you know, and what the signs look like. I can see a black eye. Yeah. But I can't see being beat up on the inside. Yeah, mental abuse. Yeah. Someone that's projecting things onto you. So now, doing this, though, Mm -hmm. we're spreading awareness. Yeah. Things to look out for. And telling people how to listen to their gut. Yeah. Because Mm -hmm. our gut 
it's really there for you the whole time. Yeah. Even with this situation I was just talking about with the paycheck thing, something inside is mm-hmm. what I call mine. Something inside mm-hmm. told me to take a picture of every one of my paychecks. Okay. Just randomly. Yeah. I'm like, okay, don't know why, but okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I have all those. Yeah. But why would that thought come up then? I should have just been like, oh, let me cash this. Yeah. So start learning to listen to your gut also. Absolutely. So we're getting rained on. I think they're yeah. moving the camera over here. <laughs> they held out for us for a while. Now we've got some ASMR going on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you want to move this back a little bit? Okay. Okay. Um. Mm-hmm. He said he was. So, number one thing, do we need to move to another table? But our plug is right there. And this can't move down here? Perfect. <laughs> oh, okay, so we're uh, coming to a close, but oh. give us a how-to guide. Someone mm-hmm. who doesn't know about boundaries, mm-hmm. just give us a quick, what are they, how can they have some, how can they maintain them? Mm. Well, your boundaries are your deal breakers. And, you know, we all, all of our life experiences have informed us to how, what are we willing to put up with? What are we, you know, what are we looking for? Um, and when you start to see, you, you make a list. And that's okay. You know, people say, oh, you have a checklist. Yes, yeah. I do. Because I, I sometimes may need to remind myself, yeah. this is what I'm expecting. And this yeah. is, these are where my standards are. And then pull it out ever so often. Look at it, remind yourself, mm-hmm. and stick to it. And guess what? You can also change it. Yeah, you can change it at time. any time. Mm-hmm. I recently started doing this, and it really changed my life. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Because I knew what I wanted before, but I wasn't being very clear on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was getting some of the things, maybe a couple. Mm-hmm. But what I need are all these things. Yeah. This is what I need. Yeah. Anything outside of this, you have to go. Right. Because what I need is this. Mm-hmm. And as easily as I had to sit with myself and think, okay, what do I really want? Yeah. Is as easily as I've been meeting people mm-hmm. who fit this. Yeah. But mm-hmm. prior to me writing it down, it seemed like I was asking for it. So I would never find someone like this. Mm-hmm. And now it seems like almost every day I'm meeting people. And not even just relationship-wise, same thing for friendships and right. everything. Mm-hmm. So I'm connecting with people who are aligned with that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's so simple, but people want a big, fancy, I did this and yeah. that, and I ate this for 30 days straight, mm-hmm. and I, I made it. Mm-hmm. I reviewed it. I've changed it as I've wanted to, and I stuck to it, though. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be the thing. Yeah. And then communicating that to whoever yeah. needs to know. Because unexpected or unvoiced uh, expectations can be relationship killers. Well, already had a small snafu here. <laughs> but, you know, we talked it out, and it was fine. But... The old me would have just let that small thing happen, mm-hmm. not said nothing, mm-hmm. and then just been like, you know, I don't want to rock the boat. Yeah. But if I didn't speak up for myself, how would he know that and there was a problem? He would not have known. Would continue. Yeah. And who I, I told him, I'm not dealing with this. I don't know who you've been dealing with, but I am not <laughs> dealing with this. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so it seemed like I was overreacting, but no, mm-hmm. this is, hey, this is the type of treatment. I'm I expect. expecting. Mm-hmm. And if you're not able to do that, well, I'm sorry. We're not going to be able to continue on. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure it sounds rude or shocking or whatever that I'm saying this over such a small thing, but I have a list. Right. Right. 
And guess what? If someone's willing to disappoint you about small things, oh. they'll disappoint you about big things. So they should be welcoming of your setting expectations, even for the small things. Yeah. Because how you do one thing is how you do everything. Mm-hmm. So I, I just spoke up for myself. Good. You know, my old self, I would have ignored it and then hoped for the best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or I would have just blocked the person mm-hmm. and then let him find someone else. Yeah, and now he's really not knowing. Yeah, I don't even know. Kind of just randomly blocks me. I don't even know what I did. Yeah. So being vocal mm-hmm. about the things that you want is mm-hmm. important. Yeah. No one can read your mind. Right. No one can read your mind. Mm-hmm. And it's not that you have to be like, hey, this is what I want and this, 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 and this. Exactly. It's not that. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, okay, so I noticed you did this. And this is the way I perceive what you do. Mm-hmm. And this is how it made me feel. feel instead right. of just coming into it and Right. Because who what other response would you expect from someone blaming you for mm-hmm. stuff than them to defend themselves? Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, even as he and I were talking, I kept trying to bring it back around. Okay. I'm not saying that you're a bad person or not right. at all. Right. I'm just talking about this one thing right, let's right, right. just bring it back around mm-hmm. to this because mm-hmm. you're giving me all this information but what i'm trying to tell you is how this, this made me feel me. and yeah. even it was an awkward conversation to have i did punch him in the side oh okay i have to really <laughs> get some understanding because you're not hearing me and you don't realize i'm wanting to let go of you over this uh-huh so yeah and it's like you know if someone were to run into your car they don't intend to hurt you. They don't right. intend to damage your property. No. But it's still damaged. Yeah. Right? And so now let's talk about how we can maybe look up at traffic signs. I have gave you a warning sign. Mm-hmm. Avoid that, you know, hey, curve coming up. Mm. Slow Even down. Pump your brakes. This <laughs> that you just said made me think about something else that I read, um, that our emotions are like, Indicator lights on dashboard. Mm-hmm. So you feel something. I right. felt played, mm-hmm. and it came up. My light was flashing. Right. But I, if I had ignored that, though, no. whole engine's gonna fall the out whole later. Light, the Transmission, whole... radiator. Mm-hmm. I mean, axle. Everything's broke now. Right. So right. I right. choose now to let whatever I'm feeling come on up and out. I love it. Come on up and out mm-hmm. because I saw something that said it only takes 90 seconds, really. For you to process any emotion, mm-hmm. anything, even the worst possible thing, if you come on and let it come up and out mm-hmm. when you feel it initially, oh, like that. Okay. holding on to it, pushing it back down, trying to bottle it up, mm-hmm. it only adds more heat to it. Mm-hmm. Now other negative things are being attached to it. Mm-hmm. So when I was feeling played at first, mm-hmm. me pushing that back down, now I'm resentful. Mm-hmm. Now I'm mad. Mm-hmm. Now I'm an angry black woman. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> I could have just said, this is what bothered me right. when it first bothered right, me. Right, right, right. So, you know, I don't know how other people feel about my new <laughs> approach, but it's so much better for me because yeah. I was always someone to just bottle everything up. Yeah. And, you know, I'm still smiling and all this on the outside, mm-hmm. not knowing I wasn't really. Yeah. But that, that was on me, though. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Because I didn't mention it. They're not knowing anything is wrong. They've going on to the next thing, living mm-hmm. life, flowing through life is what I would say. Mm-hmm. But I had to start to, one, be honest with myself about how I was feeling. Mm-hmm. And two, start to express how I was feeling. Right. And there does come a point, though, so this is now part two of the question, when do we start enforcing them? Because we told the person, mm-hmm. this is how this made me feel. And now, somehow, we're back at this. Right. So then, what would you do? So you told someone already, mm-hmm. made me feel this way. This is what happened. This is how I felt about it. Mm-hmm. I really don't want to feel this way again. Mm-hmm. Comes back up, though. Mm-hmm. So now we've got to. I think you have to, you know, take it all in a, on a case-by-case basis. You know, what is what is driving this behavior? Why are you continuing to do it? Is it because you genuinely forgot or you haven't built the habit up of avoiding this behavior that you know causes me discomfort or pain or is it because you truly don't care you know and you do have to kind of evaluate it on a case-by-case basis and then you can you can say hey I'm willing to give you time to learn how to treat me better but this is how much time you have or you know 
the severity of of it. You know, how long am I going to feel this pain? And if it if it comes back again, I do have to say this is where we draw the line. Yeah, this and is where I leave okay. you. Yeah, this is where I roll out. Right, that's my stop. Ding ding. Or <laughs> I wasn't being honest with myself about how I was feeling, nor was I letting you know. Yeah. Now, I am honest with myself about how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. I even took the time to check myself about this before I brought it to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I have brought it to you. Mm-hmm. We discussed it. Mm-hmm. And now you're doing this again. Right. Right. I know you gave them three chances. I'm really on the... Well, like I said, case by case, depends on what, it, depends is. On yeah. what it is. Right. You have to pick your battles, yeah. you know, because, hey... I'm gonna. I'm probably going to make this a mistake that you've asked me not to make. Yeah. You know, before or again, um, and I want to. I want to receive the same grace that I'm. I'm asking you to extend to me. This is but true. you know, like I said, if it's, you know, your deal breaker is, I can't cheat on you, and this is an extreme example, but that's your deal breaker. I have to respect that boundary yeah. now. You want me to, I'm trying to think of something me and David argue about. You want me to turn the light off at night so you can sleep, but I'm awake. Or, okay. and, you know, and I didn't re- realize that it was midnight and you need to rest. Mm. Well, you can't break up with me over that. You mm. know, I didn't intentionally try to leave the light on. It's just I forgot. Yeah. So, yes, you do have to set boundaries and let people know how to treat you. And, of course, if you tell me, hey, you left the light on or whatever, tomorrow I'll do better. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Mm. True, I suppose. <laughs> don't, don't punch him. Yeah, I'm not going to punch him again. <laughs> but I feel like that, for me, I don't mm-hmm. know why. I guess it's because I'm not loud and cursing at yeah. folks. When I'm saying things, I'm saying it calmly. Just right. Like what you can see. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people don't understand. I still mean what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Just because I'm not yelling. Exactly. Yeah. The seriousness is still there. Mm-hmm. I'm not being cute. I'm not playing hard to get, like, I'm telling you how I feel. Right. So right. sometimes I've noticed that I do have to, like, really, like, no. You know, yeah, and mm-hmm. even that, just that little bit of raising my voice, I'm just not even, I'm like such a easygoing person, mm-hmm. but I had to create and maintain space for myself. Mm-hmm. And when I wasn't speaking up for myself, people did not know that what they were doing was a problem for me because mm-hmm. I wasn't saying it. Right, right, right. So now that I'm starting to speak up, it's like, oh. So you just got a problem with everything, huh? And I said, well, um, everything you do. Are those things, those are problems. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, someone truly cares about you. They want to be in a relationship with you. They need to receive the best you. They deserve to receive the best you. And I can't be the best me if I'm bottling up even those little things, if I'm keeping it in and not sharing and just hoping it gets better. I'm not coming to you as my best self. Not you and know. that all really takes a toll on you as well. Mm-hmm. I do feel like the main component of me having burnout and all this was because I was seeing things, not saying anything. Mm-hmm. So I'm seeing it and making mental notes to myself, but that stack of notes became so heavy, yeah. like a bag of bricks I'm carrying around. Yeah. But the whole time, I'm not mentioning this. Mm-hmm. I'm just steady collecting bricks. And then weighing myself down. Mm. So I am a big believer in, and I don't know how you feel about this, we learn the same lessons, you know, the same things keep getting presented to us. Mm -hmm. And for me, after a while, the things were getting bigger and more severe, but they're happening faster. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to recognize, okay, this is not a good situation for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me roll out. But not still not fully learning the lesson Mm -hmm. that I was not speaking up for myself. I did not have boundaries. I was not maintaining them. Mm -hmm. So now after this, I think it was such a hard blow to my own good that I have no choice but to really learn this time. Mm -hmm. Because the same thing has been presented to me over the whole decade I've Mm -hmm. had my own business. Mm -hmm. It's been the same, really, it's been the same thing. Mm -hmm. The more I try to water myself down or, you know, make other people comfortable, the worse I feel. Mm-hmm. 
But anybody who's truly for me and on my side and supporting me, you want me to be my best self. Mm -hmm. Even if that means I'm glammed up and someone's noticing how I look and maybe they don't notice you or whatever Mm -hmm. whatever it is. Like, I had to learn that me watering myself down does not remove someone else's insecurity. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't have to dim your light for someone else's light to shine. And so now... I met someone who is very similar to me. Like, I feel like the male version of me. So he lets me be me. Yeah. And doesn't question it. Mm -hmm. But this is how I should have been accepted this whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know how much time we got left. Okay, I actually got to go. Okay. And I'm pack things up. But I definitely do want to have you on again. Um, next time we will be indoors, obviously, <laughs> or we'll check the weather. For, yeah, because this is so no, great. It's, it's it was so great. Yeah, even even the little sprinkles. Yeah, we have the was... ASMR going on. <laughs> so um, so yeah, so we talked a little bit about boundaries and standards. Mm-hmm. And um, just real quick though, tell us how doing those things. How did it make a change in your life? Like, did you notice a difference right away? Um, I wouldn't say right away. You know, it takes time for that to affect you, but definitely having a sense of peace and a sense of self-knowledge. You know, I think those were the, the first couple of things. And then, like I said, with my partner being able to go and say, hey, this is what I need from you. This is what I expect from you. I also think that helps our keep our relationship healthy yeah, yeah, yeah. because we're not we're not setting you up for an impossible task if you don't know. If you no. don't know, how can I fix it? Right. So I'll just be sitting around. I don't think I have any type of particular look on my face, but he'll just mm-hmm. ask, what's on your mind? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. And I'll just tell him. Mm-hmm. And um, we're able to talk things out easily mm-hmm. as opposed to me being over here secretly mad. Yeah. You know, I've got all this tension and stuff that I've bottled up. Now I just let it come let on it out. out. Mm-hmm. And I feel much better doing it that way. But, you know, the only people who have a problem with you having boundaries are the ones who are abusing your lack thereof. Before. Exactly. So, I agree. I mean, you have a problem with what I'm saying, but you abuse this. Mm-hmm. And you're actually the reason why I'm saying. Now I have a boundary. Yeah. You know. So it's not that <laughs> I'm changing or I'm acting funny. I feel like I'm owed the same respect and decency I'm giving you. Right. Oh, that's too much to ask? No. Oh. Mm-mm. Well, if it's too <laughs> much to ask, then that person doesn't need to be in my life, and it's as simple as that. So, yeah. again, someone said that I was taking it too far, and you can't <laughs> say that people are dead to you. But if I've told you repeatedly, this is how I expect to be treated, Yeah. you're choosing not to treat me that way. Well, then we're not a good fit. Mm-hmm. So, you know, easily you can go get someone else who's going to deal with this because I am not. Yep. And that's okay. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. And even it could change over time with a person. You know, we sometimes, people are supposed to be with us for a season mm-hmm. or a reason, mm-hmm. not necessarily for life. Right. And again, people have to learn how to be okay with that mm-hmm. because we may have been cool back in the Coco's days. Mm-hmm. We're hanging out. Mm-hmm. We're in line. Mm-hmm. We're here before 10 or whatever it was. And that was cool for us then. Yeah. But now I'm going to do stuff like this and you don't, you don't, you're not, oh, you're not well, hey, ready. That's fine though. I'm mm-hmm. not going to stop this, but mm-hmm. I'm also not going to meet whatever club you're going to tonight. I choose to do this. So I want yeah. to, you know, I'm just going in this direction. Yeah. And, and we, it's okay. We change over time. I mean, even, you know, your five yourself five years ago maybe wouldn't hang out with yourself today. Right, right, right. You know, so and it's okay. Fine. If you your relationship changes and who knows? A couple of years go by, you may be able to come back and still be in each other's lives. So, yeah. you know, it's okay to grow and experience new things Probably with fine. different people. And there is no beef. Behind right. that, either. Mm-hmm. we've uh, what do they say? Oh, decided to uncouple. That's the new uh, thing I learned. Decided okay. to uncouple, mm-hmm. and that's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, James was doing these things, and I wanted to do this. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's no hard feeling, right? But 
you're just doing our own thing separately. But this comes back to another thing that you said that you don't owe anyone any explanation. Right. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how many years you saw me with James. Like I'm not with him now. And you can why are you questioning that? If I'm telling you I made the decision to leave, I was unhappy. Don't you want me to be happy? Exactly. Oh, you want me to just be with James. Right. But why? Because it fits into their worldview and it makes them comfortable. But it has nothing to do with your sense of comfort. Yeah. Oh, well. Sorry to They'll make live you so. uncomfortable, but <laughs> I'm choosing to be happy yeah. instead. And misery loves company, but I'm just not wanting to be in that boat. 